Welcome to 9.7 Linear, Quadratic, and Exponential Models. Our goal is that we can choose a linear, quadratic, or exponential model for data. So this chapter has primarily focused on quadratic functions, this middle type right here. Remember, a quadratic function is in this form, y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. So there is a squared value in the beginning of the equation. This is shown as a parabola. So this is what the graph of a quadratic function looks like. It either looks like a U that's opening up or a U that's opening down like that. So those are the two options. And remember, it depends on if the leading coefficient is positive or negative. Now, linear, linear we talked about several chapters ago. You should definitely be comfortable with linear functions. They are in the form y equals mx plus b. And they graph as a line that looks like this with a positive slope or looks like this with a negative slope. So linear functions, quadratic functions, and the last kind of function that we have learned about in the past are called exponential functions. Remember, exponential is in the form y equals a times b to the x. And they look like either a growth curve going up or a decay curve going down. And remember, the growth and decay, whether it grows or decays, depends on that B value. If that B value is between 0 and 1, it will decay. And if that B value is greater than 1, it will grow. So now today, in this lesson, we're going to be looking at um, coordinate points. We're also going to be looking at tables and a real-life application problem and basically determine which function each of the data values or um, the table matches. So example one, choose a model by graphing. In example one, part A, we have five coordinate points. So take a moment to plot these coordinate points on your graph. And you will note that when you plot these points, it graphs as a parabola. So because it looks like a parabola, this is a quadratic model. In part B, we graph the four points and we see that it is not a straight line going down, but rather a curve. So it's not going down by the same amount each time. So therefore, it's not linear. It has to be exponential. And in part C, we see that there's a linear model. The reason why is because it's going up by the same value, the same slope each time. So this is a linear model. And now we have seen an example of each type of function. So far we have looked at graphs and plotting points. Now we're going to be looking at tables, XY tables, which I know you have been accustomed to in the past. So how do you find the best model while looking at a table? We're still focusing on the three functions, linear, quadratic, and exponential. But there are some ways that you can figure out um, what kind of function each is. So first of all, linear function. You know that it's a linear function if the y values have a common difference. We de definitely have done this in the past. Take a look at the chart that's given and take a look at the y values. They are going up by 3 each time. So I want you to write this down. Add or subtract by the same number, and that is for the y values. So if you see that happening in your table, you know that you have a linear function. Quadratic function is the new one. Quadratic functions, this is how you know if you have a quadratic function, the second differences are constant. Now this is new. What does that mean, second differences? Well, we're used to doing first differences. Look at this example down here. You can see that the first differences are not the same number, but if you were to figure out the difference between the first differences to get the second differences, look at this column right here, it's the same number. Plus 4, plus 4, plus 4. So that means if you do the first differences, don't get the same number. Try the second differences. If you get the second differences to be the same number, aka being constant, then you know you have a quadratic function. Exponential function. We looked at this a few chapters ago. You know you have an exponential function if the y values have a common ratio. 
that means you multiply by the same number. Now remember in the past we have seen that we've like divided by a number such as two or three. Well remember when you divide by a number you're really just multiplying by the reciprocal. So if you're dividing by two you're actually just multiplying by one half. So you can remember that if you are multiplying or dividing by the same number in the y column which is right here then you have a, an exponential function. And we do have one since we're multiplying by two each time in the y column. Now let's take a look at example two and use this knowledge and apply it. Part A, which type of function best models the data use differences or ratios? So draw your arrows for each column. The x values are going up by one. And the y values are going down by four. So look at the chart that we just talked about. Because the first differences are constant and we are adding or subtracting by the same number, this is a linear function. In part B, we have a different table. The x values are still going up by 1. This time, let's do the first differences and see if we get the same number. And we find out that the first one is going down by 0.25. The next one's going down by 0 0.75, 0 0.125, and a negative 1.75. So when that happens, you know the first differences are not the same, so it cannot be linear. You also know that this cannot be exponential because we are not multiplying by the same number to get the next one. So now let's try the second differences. And you may have noticed when writing these numbers that there was a pattern going on. Each pair of numbers is going down by 0.5. So that means the second differences are constant. Therefore, we have a quadratic function. So there you have it. You see a linear model, you see a quadratic model, and a model for exponential will be pretty similar to part A, except instead of adding or subtracting by the same number for the y values, you'd be multiplying. Let's move on to our last example. Example 3, modeling real-world data. The data at right gives the value of a used car over time. Which type of function best models the data? Write an equation to model the data. So take a moment and just look at the table. Look at the years column as well as the values column and see what's going on. Hopefully you're realizing off the bat that it is not linear. Because, take a look at the y values, they are not going down by the same number. So we can write that immediately, not linear. So that leaves us with two possibilities. Now we're going to do a couple different steps and it will help us figure out which model this is. First thing we're going to do is graph the data. So you know how to plot points. Take a moment and do that now.
graph curves and does not look quadratic. It may be exponential. It does not look quadratic because it is not doing that U-shaped curve. It looks like it's just going down right now. That would make sense because the value of a used car does not go up as time goes on unless it's a collectible car from like the 1950s or so. So the graph curves and does not look quadratic. So because we think it may be exponential, we want to test for a common ratio, which means multiplying by the same number. So take a look at the table, and you can see that the years are going up by 1, so that's good. Now let's look at the y values. The way that you figure out if there is a common ratio is you take the second number and divide it by the first. So we'll do that, 11,065 divided by 12,575. I'm getting these values right in the table from the first two rows. That is approximately 0 0.88. Let's do a few more runs and see if we get a similar number. 9,750 divided by 11,065. That is approximately 0 0.88. Interesting. Let's do uh, at least one more. 8,520. I'm getting this all from the table divided by 9,750, that is approximately 0 0.87. So would you agree that this is basically the same number? So the value of the car is roughly 0 0.88 times its value of the previous year. So now that we say this is an exponential function, we need to write the equation or model. So remember, exponential is in the form y equals a times b to the x. The x and the y stay there. We need to determine what the a and the b are. Remember, the a is the initial value, aka the value of the car at year zero, right when they bought it. So that is 12,575. And the b value is the growth or decay factor. As you can tell in the chart, the car is decaying in value. So we just found out that value. It is the, called the common ratio. 0 0.88, and I'm just going to write decay factor. And now we can just substitute those two values in and get our equation. y equals 12,575 times 0 0.88 to the x. There is our equation. <laughs> And now for the final step, we want to test two other points besides the first couple values to make sure that it works. This is the checking process now. So let's test two points from the table. I'll choose 2, 9,750, as well as 4, 7,540. And remember, when we check our answer, almost always we're just plugging in values to make sure they work. So let's plug them in. Y equals 9,750, so we might as well just plug that in. Or we're actually going to hope to get that out, so I'll just wait for it. So the x value is 2, so that means the 2 is going to be in the exponent. When you type this into the calculator, you get 9,738. I would say that's pretty close to 9,750. So that is close to the data point. Now let's test the other point. y equals 12,575 times 0 0.88 to the fourth this time. And when we type that into the calculator, we find out that it's 7,541, which is really close to the Y value. So I'll say check again. It works. And therefore, we checked it, and we can say that this is the equation that models the data.
Okay. This equation models the data. That completes today's lesson. Feel free to try today's lesson check from 9.7. If not, you can wait until we do problems like this together during class. Just make sure you have done 9.6 lesson check.